Um, so I am Christine Deschler, Chair of the Allington Finance Committee, and I'm calling the June 26, 2023 meeting of the committee to order. I want to confirm um, the attendance of members of the committee uh, and confirm that people can hear me. So when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Um, and um, and I'll, I'll just go ahead with that right now, starting with Jordan, who's not here. Shane? Here. Jennifer? Here. Sophie? Brian is here. Carolyn? Here. Rebecca? Here. Josh? Grant? Charlie? Here. John Griffin won't be here. Daryl? Daryl's here. He was here. He is here. He's here. Sorry, I'm here. All right. Just have to relearn how to use the mute button. <laughs> Annie? Here. Al Jones won't be with us tonight. Topher? Here. Peggy won't be here. Al Tosti won't be here. Dean Carmen? Uh, Dave McKenna? Here. And Tara Bradley? Here. All right. Um, all right, let me continue with the script. On March 23, Governor Hurley signed into law a supplemental budget bill, which among other things extends the temporary provisions of 31st, 2025. This further extension allows public bodies to continue holding meetings remotely without, without a quorum of the body physically present at a meeting location so long as adequate alternative access to the deliberations of the meeting is provided to the public which is what we are doing today. Adequate alternative access includes providing public access through Zoom video conferencing. Ensuring public access does not ensure public comment or public participation. This meeting will not feature public comment. Those wishing to provide comments may do so by emailing our executive secretary, Tara Bradley, at tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us. This meeting is being recorded. Um, Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. I will introduce speakers and then we'll recognize members wishing to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Um, Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. <clears throat> also, please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Uh, finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. All right, with that business done, I am going to hand it over to Alex and Ida uh, to discuss their um, transfer requests. So uh, go ahead, Alex and Ida. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, having technical difficulties. Uh, should I share my screen? We can walk through uh, sort of that memo that was circulated. Yeah, sure. Just one moment. All right, so um, we have a two. So, so thanks for having us, by the way. Um, I think I've met all most all of you at this point. If not, um, I'm Alex McGee. I'm the town's relatively new deputy town manager and finance director. Um, you all know Ida, she's joining us as well. So thanks for having us. Um, we have sort of two higher level um, reserve fund transfer requests um, broken into um, sort of segments. So uh, the first we'll go over uh, legal bills. The first is uh, a request of $62,362. Um, this stems from a shortfall that was caused by some pretty extensive negotiations with our patrol union officer, uh, uh, excuse me, um, bargaining unit. Um, we were on the precipice of going to the JLMC, which is the Joint Labor Management Committee, um, which when you are sort of at an impasse with a public safety bargaining unit, um, you go to them to sort of help get a deal hammered out. Um, and so with the very extensive preparation that our outside labor council had to do, uh, we had a shortfall in legal bills um, to the tune of $62,000 and change. 
Um, there was also a $100,000 settlement. Um, this was caused by an injury to a person, to a town resident, um, and they filed a claim with the town because of this injury, which was fairly uh, extensive. Um, there's a statutory limit of $100,000. Um, we did not take it to court, which would have been more costly. So we were able to sort of negotiate the settlement before it went there. Um, so uh, kudos are due to our legal department. Um, and then finally, we had about a $15,000 expense shortfall. Um, this stems from, we had a departure in the legal department, um, which necessitated a buyout, of, um, some, you know, some sick and vacation time, and then it created sort of a, um, a shortfall of employees where we needed to, uh, we had one employee who had to work sort of a lot of overtime to clean up sort of a um, sort of a little bit of a mess that was left by our departing employee. So um, in total, there's 177,362 that we're requesting um, from the reserve fund to the legal department. And then separately from the um, deferred compensation fund, which is a separate fund that has been set up for this specific purpose, um, a request of $16,867 for a very long tenured employee who has uh, recently told us that they plan on retiring at the end of July. So um, that money, we wouldn't have budgeted it anyways, but um, you know, it's, it's about $16,867 total. So uh, when you combine those two, the total is 194,000 and some change. Um, 16,867 coming from the Deferred Compensation Fund and 177,362 coming from the Reserve Fund. Now, with the 1% uh, annually that's set aside for the Reserve Fund, um, assuming these transfers went through, this would leave uh, about $1.575 million, which would close to free cash once we close the books, but the end of the fiscal year is just right around the corner. So, a little long-winded, but if there are questions, I'd be happy to take them. Um, I have two questions. One is the personal injury settlement. Um, do we need to work? The I, I don't need to know the specifics of the cause of the injury, but as a town, do we need to worry about a, um, this happening in the future is one question. And the second question I have is, what is the balance left in the deferred compensation fund after the transfer out? Sure, um, maybe I can take the first one. Um, and I'll do the second. Okay, so so I think that we always need to be scared of these kinds of things, but I don't know that we could have planned for this specifically. Um, this was an injury that happened um, at a playground um, and um, we, have since sort of, you know, ensured that we are looking at maintenance of our playground equipment more closely because of, you know, this incident, but uh, it's hard to plan for these kinds of things. This is sort of a freak accident and um, on, you know, the kind of um, facility that's used daily by a lot of different people. And so, um, yes, we need to be careful and I don't know that we can plan for these kinds of things specifically, but we do need to, you know, do our best to plan for them. And I'll jump on the second question. We have now 38,324 in the deferred comp. And after we pay Vinny, we're going to have 21,457. 457 or 467? 457. All right. Thank you. All right. Other questions? I see Charlie's hand is up. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I have a question about the 16867 um, you, you mentioned that the employee is retiring at the end of July. That's the next fiscal year. Are we spending the money out of this fiscal year or next fiscal year? He will be paid next fiscal year, but the, we need a transfer. We need the, the transfer has to be approved by you. So instead of waiting till the end of the next fiscal year, we will be uh, transferring the money to DPW and encumber the, the funds. He has already put in the papers. We approved his uh, retirement. It's just, he just has to be paid out in July.
Anything else, Charlie? Uh, no, thank you. I, I'm all okay. set. Um, all right, Topher? Yeah, so <clears throat> just a bit of a new, new member question. So it says it's a long tenured employee. So, I mean, how many, how many employees are entitled to this? Or like, how long do they have to stay here to be entitled to this deferred compensation? Yeah, that's an interesting most question. Them, oh, Eva, you want to take it? Yeah, most of them have retired. We only have, after Vimy is gone, we only going to have one person entitled of getting 7%. And then eight people who will be getting 2%. I'm not sure exactly how many years they have to be here, but I know that Vinny specifically has been with the town for 46 years. There's people that have been, they were hired prior to 1984, the town meeting in 84 that are entitled to this. And then after that, there's sort of a series of different votes that gave people different amounts. But yeah, so Vinny was hired in 1977 was his start date. And then there's one other employee who was, I think, in, hired in 1980. And they're the two that have this sort of higher level of Deferred comp. Madam Chair, I can add something to that. Go ahead, Charlie. So, um, towards the question, Topher, um, during the uh, 80s, um, the town manager at the time, Don Marquis, negotiated the uh, deferred salary basically for people to uh, accept uh, at their retirement in exchange for not taking raises at the current time uh, during, um, you know, severe, uh, tough financial. Uh, conditions of the town. Okay. All right. Thank you. I was yeah, just, thank you for the history. And I was just wanting to get a sense of how big an ex, you know, how big a exposure, if you will, this was. So thank you. Well said. Brian. Uh this question is for Ida. Um are these accounts being the bean counter that I am, are, are these accounts the right accounts? Like for instance, $177,000 to legal, to legal expense. If anybody looks at this next year, whatever, they'll say, what the heck is going on over there where a hundred thousand of this is really for a settlement for, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, obviously for another expense for, I would see going in another line. Um, well, it, we usually pay all the settlements from the legal department. So whenever we need an infusion in the legal budget, we put it in their, um, department. We don't have a settlement line, let's say an appropriation. If your suggestion is that we should have one, maybe we can look into it next year. Okay, but we I'm always not... use the legal expenses line. Okay. I, I trust your judgment. You're in control. There's no question about it. I just was wondering. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Any other questions for either Ida or Alex from anybody. One other thing that I'd just like to note about the employee buyout um, is that these longer tenured employees, they didn't have a cap on the amount of, um, so this is just for deferred comp, but they also didn't have a cap, a cap on their sick buyout. Um, more recent employees uh, are capped. Um, and so just to give a sense that those costs as we move further and further into the future, those costs will be more controllable in general. Just Topher for your sort of enlightenment. Okay, thank you. Yep. Shane, your hands up. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Ida. Um, the services rendered, so the 62 and change, can you give me a sense of sort of what, what, what that involves and is it a flat rate or an hourly rate that the town is paying? What sort of sort of contract do we have. Uh, and third question there is, do we expect that this will happen again, having to go to the JLMC with other um, unions? Yeah, I can take those. So it is an hourly rate. Um, we have um, used VH or VDH for a number of years as our labor attorneys. Um, they offer very specialized services in uh, working with our you know, many unions in town. Um, this specifically, almost all of it uh, stemmed from our patrol negotiation, which was very difficult. Um, we just recently settled uh, 
with them for FY22 through FY24. So we're about to enter 24. So, you know, they were about two years off a of contract and this entire time they've been sort of in negotiations. So um, they work on sort of the entire negotiation with the town's um, sort of labor team, which consists of the HR director, um, currently Sandy uh, in his capacity as the prior finance director and myself now as a finance director. Um, and so they work sort of hand in hand with us in sort of all aspects of that negotiation, which is, you know, uh, really intricate. Um, we don't, I wouldn't expect this to, to have to go to the JLMC into the future. Um, I don't think anyone, so, so us, I know that I can speak for us that we don't want to go to the JLMC. Um, the union has said that they don't want to go to the JLMC. They don't want to have it sort of in uh, you know, like a judge's hands, essentially. And so um, it behooves everyone to sort of settle before you actually have somebody settle for you. So there is um, sort of uh, the intent is to not go to the JLMC. It sort of exists as a as a last stop, I guess. Thank you. I'm sorry, you said we did resolve a contract without having yeah, we resolved it the day we had the arbitrators in, uh, you know, we had it at uh, town hall, we had the arbitrators there and then sort of as part of this extended sort of negotiation we hammered out right at the last minute kind of a settlement before we went into the room with them, which was a very, frankly, a good outcome. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, Alex, either do you anticipate any further transfer? issues that will come up between now and the end of the fiscal year, which is in a few days? Well, it's not over till it's over. <laughs> so we don't know yet. We always put those uh, that last sentence that we might come back for additional transfers, but um, we won't know. We still have like four days. So um, we'll, we'll make sure we'll give you a heads up if we need anything else. Like I said, the, the, the fiscal year ends on 6.30, so we still have four days to go. Charlie? Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that we uh, accept the uh, recommendations for the transfers as presented. Second. Second. All right. Uh, there's been a motion to approve requested transfers. It's been accepted. Um, any other questions or comments or discussions before I uh, have a roll call vote? All right, seeing none, we will take a, a vote. Uh, Jordan, he's not, here. he's not here, right? Your arm. Uh, um, Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Brian. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh isn't here. Grant isn't here. Charlie. Yes. John isn't here. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. Al Jones isn't here. Topher. Yes. Peggy isn't here. Al Tosti isn't here. Yes. Al Tosti is here. Oh, uh, is it is it a yes, Al? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Dean is still not here. Dave? Yes. All right, it is unanimous. The transfer requests have been approved. Um, I will entertain uh, the so-called Dean Carmen motion right now that enables me with uh, one or two other vice chairs to approve any remaining transfer requests. So move. move, yeah. Second. Okay. All right. Um, any questions about what we're going to vote on? Uh, Madam sorry. Chair? Is there a cap? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's 25,000 by yourself and 50,000 um, with the uh, other chairs, vice okay. chairs. All right. Is that, is that acceptable? That is for me. All right. Uh, so everyone knows what we're voting on? All right. What, sorry, was it one chair, one additional chair, or the other three chairs for the 50,000? Uh, in the past, it's been one additional chair. Okay. All right. Jordan isn't here. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? 
Yes. Sophie. Brian. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Grant. Charlie. Yes. John. Is he here? Annie. Yes. I'm sorry. I, missed, I skipped Daryl. Daryl. Yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> Al Jones is in here. Topher. Yes. Um, Peggy's not here, and Al Tosti. Yes. All right, it's unanimous. Thank you very much, Ida and Alex. Um, and... You forgot me. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave? Yes. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, Dave. That's okay. All right, unanimous. Uh, thank you, Ida, and thank you, thank Alex. You. Have a nice summer, um, and we will see you, speak to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Charlie, I see your hand is still up. Is that? From... Oh, it's a new. It's a new up. It's a new up. Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, before we, um, uh, uh, you know, have any motions to adjourn or whatever, uh, I just wanted to uh, congratulate the chair on a great uh, first year as chair, and thank you for all of the good work, and thank Tara for your work as well. Second. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlie. Appreciate it. All right. So. Um, I have just two things I just want to um, talk about very briefly. I don't want to hold people. Um, we had some um, some things that we discussed over the, the course of the, the budget year about doing some follow up. Um, and I just want to remind people what they were and maybe seek some volunteers to, to maybe start working on it over the summer months um, so that we um, um, can focus more clearly on things when the, the budget season comes up. Um, one of the things was, um, um, let's see, uh, we talked about, well, we have the uh, follow up on the composting Warren article. I will, I'm going to uh, volunteer the people who shepherded the middle school people through uh, successfully town meeting to make sure that um, they understand what we'll be, we'll be looking for um, at the end of, uh, at, well, at the, in January. Um, so you know who you are, uh, Carolyn, Jennifer, Annie. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we had um, a communication subcommittee. It was Charlie and Shane who um, did some great stuff for us last year. Uh, I was thinking it might be good to have uh, some type of um, article, um, maybe at, in your Arlington.com, to summarize what it is that we accomplished this year and also to talk about the upcoming um, override. Um, I was wondering if there were some people who would volunteer to um, at least meet amongst yourselves and talk about whether that's a good idea to get something going to just start working on that. Is anyone interested in doing, uh, working on that communication subcommittee? Yeah, actually, I, I volunteered earlier to be part of that group, so I'm great. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, and um, I think that Shane and Charlie, if they're not going to help, they can at least advise. So. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not doing all the work. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 uh, yeah I'm, I'll, we'll still work on it. I'll, I'll all right. Work. Great. <laughs> all right. I, didn't, I didn't know we had to re-up. I thought we were automatically <laughs> Um, so we have some liaisons to the Disability Commission, Sophie and um, Annie, you've been doing a good job with arts and culture. I don't know if you want anyone Happy to, to assist, um, but uh, if you, there's interest there, talk to Annie. Um, Annie and Al Jones have work on our IT subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Who else works? And Daryl? Yeah, we used the three of us and there have been others in the past, so. Always happy to have someone pitch in. All right. So anyone who is interested in that, please get in touch with Annie and Alan and um, Daryl. Um, that is a very important, very, very important committee for us. Um, 
the um, the leadership team, uh, me, Al Jones, Annie, and Daryl. Uh, I think we'll get together at some point at some point this summer mm -hmm. and talk about reporting. Um, mm -hmm. We've it's been it's been on our list of things to improve, so uh, it, it's going to be something to. Mm -hmm. I think. We've, we've, we've been complaining a lot uh, for a while and um, let's see if we can move the dial on a, uh, a better, uh, a, a more seamless uh, reporting system there. Um, Carolyn, you volunteered to follow up on water bodies. Um, and I so haven't talked to them, but I will. That would, that would be great. Um, we, I think everyone, um, Everyone knows it's an important issue. It's just an expensive issue and it's getting more expensive Absolutely. and it would be good to have someone embedded in it more so that we, uh, maybe we can try to influence uh, it uh, more than we've, I think we've been able to. Um, All right. So if you can okay. just follow up, get the information, just have the, the dialogue with the wide water bodies group, that would be great. Um, we talked about um, the issue with the Council on Aging Enterprise Fund being an enterprise fund. Um, and I think um, we should probably have a team to think about and work on that over the summer. Um, I'm going to volunteer Dean Carmen, myself, and Al Tosti, and anyone else who wants to, to, to think about uh, transitioning that enterprise fund to not be an enterprise prize fund, just let me know. Because it's um, um, the elder council, I'll actually, I'm actually interested in that as well. Fabulous, great. That's Thank okay, you. that's okay. That's, that'd be wonderful. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, the only other thing I have on my list is something that Shane mentioned, and that was um, doing some uh, uh, having an operations research working group on the motor vehicle motor vehicle equipment repair division. Shane, I don't know if, if what your thoughts are about that at this point in time. Um, I forget. I think it might have well, might have been Jordan that was it. Jordan. Uh, it might have been Jordan, but um, yeah, no, I think that's an interesting discussion. Uh, maybe I can start with Jordan since he was. Uh, he had this budget, I think, right, Jennifer? Um, yeah, so I think I think there was a bunch of confusion about the current status and, and the current plan. So I think it'd be helpful to get clarity before we do that budget again. Um, and sort of, you know, I think it's it's more about just conversations. With the so, if, director. so those, so anyone who is interested in working on that. And, and, I, and I know having worked on that budget, it's complex and problematic and has been for a while. So if anyone wants to work with uh, Shane and Jennifer and Jordan on that, um, please get in touch with Shane and, and Jennifer. I, I do know that um, um, uh, John Griffin um, is very eager to work on various projects. So. Um, that might be something that he might be very interested and in, very helpful with as well. So you might want to shoot him an email um, and talk to him about maybe him uh, helping with that work. Um, <clears throat> that is that was all that I have. Other than I know that we talked about um, <clears throat> um, field user fees, um, and I think that was something that that uh, Dean raised and uh, we might look at that a little bit more closely, maybe at the beginning of the budget season. Jennifer, your hand is up. Yeah, Madam Chair, I was just curious about um, recruiting, which I think uh, months ago, Shane and Charlie and I sort of connected very briefly on. So I know that we have an opening in 18, but we also have a couple of floaters that in theory could be filled and those people could float elsewhere. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Uh, so is that people four nine and is there one more? There yes, um, four and nine and eleven. Okay, eleven. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so we'll have yeah. to we'll have to advertise for that um, as well, and we can use um, start doing uh, using the things that I used the various uh, avenues that I used last year, um, including putting on the town's website and uh, the A list and yourarlington.com and getting an email blast out. Um, uh, so we can talk about that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, the recruitment efforts were, were pretty good last year. I mean, I, I saw it in a lot of places and I, that wasn't true in the past. So that was great. Um, and I think that's it. And then the only other, yes, I was just about to say, um, before one more thing before minutes, um, though, is I just want to get a, a very brief feedback about how people felt about the starting in person and going remote for much of February and then coming back in person in March. I just, for those of you who felt that it, you wanted to have more in person meetings. Raise your hand in Zoom. Carolyn wanted more. Dave McKenna wanted more. For the future, it wasn't horrible and unexplained then, but for the future. More in-person meetings. And you too, Dave, right? Anybody else? Uh, Charlie, your hand's up. Uh, yeah, I just think we should have as many in-person meetings as possible. Jennifer. Yeah, I, I like actually the default in-person with the option to go remote when there's just not enough for a full meeting. So if we think there's only sort of an hour's worth, I'd rather do that remote. Yeah. And I think um, there were some meetings in February that were kind of thin on the agenda that I called anyway. And mostly I did that because I just felt like we had so many new people and I just wanted to keep a sort of a team dynamic going uh, next year. Um, I don't know if I, if that were to happen again, I may not have called as many, quite as many, I might have not called as many February meetings. And the same with the town, uh, the uh, town meeting, the meetings before town meeting. I don't know, uh, I probably should not have, called as many meetings before town meeting. Um, so I'm, I'm going to work on that. Carolyn, your hands up. You're muted. Sarah just brought up, brought, brought up a great point, which is when someone has childcare issues, allowing them to be hybrid um, rather than having to come in. Um, and I think still having hybrid available is, is worth it. Um, but I do like when we're in person. Yeah, I'm, I think hybrid is super important for those of us who may have other obligations or travel or whatever that takes us away. And, you know, we still want to be able to come to the meetings in the evenings. So um, if not to be able to fully participate, at least to be able to, you know, hear what's going on. So we're up to date when the next meeting is called, that's all right. Um, so, um, all good points, Daryl. Um, so speaking from personal experience where, um, uh, in, in March, I, you know, had a bad case of bronchitis. I, I could have attended more meetings, um, if they'd been hybrid. Um, so I think there are situations where some, a little flexibility, uh, is, is helpful to allowing people to attend when maybe getting down to the police station is difficult. Good points. And, and also um, having a re fully remote meeting is also good um, in the middle of winter when there are storms coming. Instead of having to cancel a meeting, it is good to be able to just say, we're going to have a Zoom meeting. Um, and just count on it um, rather than uh, the day before the, the afternoon canceling it because of the big storm. Right, which means that when we post it, we have to post it with that sort of language. Yeah. 
yeah well yes it, it's it, it's yeah we'll have to be careful um and uh, be thoughtful yeah all right minutes people um it thank you tara do we want to so these are the minutes from june 7th do we uh -huh. also want to try to finalize the ones from tonight so that I could post those as well? Um, I, I say we just keep those, we'll do those minutes in the fall when we okay. are going to have to meet anyway um, for the uh, special town meeting. So I don't wanna have to keep people um, tonight unnecessarily more so than we've done already. So, but thanks anyway, Tara. Um, so everyone sees the minutes of June 7th. This is the override discussion meeting. Does anyone have um, any changes or corrections to make? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. All right. Any, any so I think those, the, I, I didn't write down who voted, but it, I've, my memory was slightly different people. So if everyone could just look at the list, mm -hmm. I might be wrong. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I may be, may, may be wrong then. Okay. Thanks. No, good point. Everyone, everyone is comfortable as to how their vote was recorded. Yeah, that looks correct to me. All right. So unless we have any further uh, revisions or comments, uh, we'll take it to a vote. All right, uh, Jordan is not here. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie's not here. Brian? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh isn't here. Grant isn't here. Charlie? Yes. Uh, John isn't here. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones isn't here. Topher? Hmm? Topher? Is he Topher seems here? to have dropped off. All right. Uh, Peggy's not here. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean Carmen isn't here. Dave McKenna. Yes. All right. The minutes of the seventh have been approved unanimously. All right. Does anyone have anything further tonight? I appreciate your all coming, uh, attending this meeting. I know everyone's eager to be done with the budget season and, uh, this is it. Oh, I want the budget season to go on forever, Craig. <laughs> well, well, I might seem that way because, as I said, we will have a special town meeting. Um, it looks like October. Uh, so we will be meeting most likely starting in September. Um, and so be prepared, people. Um, but between now and then, I hope everyone has a very enjoyable, safe, uh, summer. You too. You Thanks, too. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Bye. 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 Bye.